Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel Forex PNL. Today is the 9th of February 2024 and I'm well. I'm done trading for the week and it's time for me to give you guys an update on um you know the prop firm accounts, challenge accounts that I'm currently trading with um Aqua Funded. Okay, as you guys can see here, um actually this is going to be the um volume two, all right. Because in the first volume, guys, as you guys remember, I walked through their website and the different perks that they offer, and um, well, right now it's time for me to start trading a challenge account with them and uh, well i'm about to give you guys my updates okay now um first things first okay before i forget um just to make sure that if you're using a copy trader guys um make sure that the aqua funded account is actually the master account okay and not a slave account okay make sure that the aqua funded account is the master account and not a slave account okay so um it's something for you to keep in mind okay because i actually was using it as one of the um, other accounts because i already had my master and all i did was just to um you know add it in there um as one of the other accounts but um i was going through their discord channel and i actually saw where they um you know they wanted you to use their aqua funded accounts as the master account so um make sure that um if you're going to be trading with this prop firm and you use a copier make sure that the aqua funded account is the um master account okay that's one thing that i found out i know i think i don't think i included it in the la last video okay because i was not aware of that okay all right so um going back into the um accounts here as you can see well um this week actually made about two percent but um something happened i actually started trading this account um last week okay i took one trade in this account last week okay and uh well that was the first trade in the account that was the only uh, trade that i took um for last week it's a euro yen trade but um i made a very huge mistake on that particular trade okay first of all um i it, obviously it's completely my fault okay i updated my excel spreadsheet my risk management um spreadsheet in my um laptop but um i didn't know that the excel in my phone um did not update and when i took this trade this euro yen trade last week um you know it was i took the um the numbers that i had on my phone and it literally threw off my risk um the risk percent okay and um when i lost that trade guys um i went back to look to see exactly how much i lost but i realized that i lost way more than i was supposed to okay so that was when i started digging deep to see what happened and that was when i realized the error okay but as you can see here you notice that um on this day right here you notice i lost um 1262 that was almost 1.3 percent on one trade um that is a whole lot okay personally these days i don't even want to lose more than two percent in a week so um that means i am not i should not be in any way risking 1.2 percent or 1.3 percent in my um first trade for the week right so because of that i just decided to just pause and come back with a fresh mind um you know this week and then uh, well luckily this week was a very nice week i ended up making about two 2.5 2.6 percent return and as you can see we are back in um, profits again above water um, level you can see we are right around uh, one percent um, in profits right here okay um, so well again uh, profit targets in this particular account it's um, let's see so the profit target is um, 8,000 as you can see here so right now we are right around 10% um, in to the profit target so that's good um, everything is looking very nice okay so not much again nice um, dashboard as you guys can see here um, average winning trade is about $425 uh, the average losing trade is quite high here and that is because of um, this uh, 1,200 um, and dollars lost that I scored on that euro yen trade okay so as you can see here that affected my equity you can see from hundred dollars straight down to nine eight thousand seven hundred and um, you know after the weekend this week I came back um, swinging and um, well um, luckily I was able to at least dig this account back again um, out of um, the negative region okay so hopefully again maybe from next week we'll be able to um, you know start um, you know growing this equity curve and who knows let's see how it goes I'm not going to put the um, cut um, before the horse okay so let's see um, just to walk through a few trades let me see okay so 
I don't know for some reason all my trades are not showing here but I'm just going to just select maybe one or two trades that I'm going to walk through just to show you guys um, you know the setups the rationale behind the setups that I took okay so I'll probably walk through this um, British pound some Canadian dollar trade and um, maybe this British pound some US dollar trade okay I remember these trade setups so I'm just going to go show you guys um, the trade setups and explain it try so that you guys will understand the thought process you know that um, you know that the reason why I took these trades okay all right so let's go um check out um trading view all right so now if we're going to trading view this is um british pounds and us dollar we're looking at the um four hours time frame and um this is the setup that i'm talking about right here okay this is that trade now um if, it, if i zoom out you notice what's going on in this particular pair well um the market seemed to kind of top out in this particular area let's read price action we kind of topped out in this particular area got a nice push to the downside and uh, from here you can see that from right around here the markets kind of um respected this area we tapped into this particular origin candle that we have here and um since then the market has just been um you know kind of ranging and finally we get a nice push to the downside notice how this area has been working as an area of support okay on this particular charts finally right around here the market hesitates a little bit and then boom nice push to the downside okay um well i saw this nice push to the downside and i kind of actually anticipated this retracement because if you notice this push to the downside kind of took us into this massive uh, demand zone area that we have here um to the left okay you can see this nice push to the upside that led to the break of this level of structure right and uh, you can see how this area here this demand area this little hesitation here was what held price inside this particular level of um let's say support okay that we have here so finally this is the level that led to the break of this level of um structure that took off this demand zone okay so this in my opinion was a valid supply zone and um well um as a result i had identified that supply zone guys and uh well my anticipation is that well whenever price gives us a retracement into this particular supply zone area that from right around here the bears will come into this market and will start another push to the downside at least for a possible retest of this previous um swing low area okay so well i set up my trades guys uh when the markets got into this area i started zooming into the smaller time frames to start reading price action again all right to identify any potential reversal okay so um i'm going to go into the smaller time frame now i think in this case i went into the minute 15 if i'm not mistaken so if we go into the minute 15 time frame what do we have here okay so well the markets got into this particular um um supply zone that we have on the four hours time frame you can see demands continue to hold okay this is a demand zone obviously okay um continues to hold right here the market just continues to dip in all right to dip in deep out dip in deep out okay i i kind of like the um the way this market was moving okay and um let me see and then finally finally guys um right around let me see no i didn't take this straight right around here i think i took this straight somewhere around here okay all right so um this was around i think um before uh new york session on that particular day uh the markets gave us this hesitation and um all this happened within the um tokyo session you know the asian session and then um finally we got a nice push to the downside guys i like the way this push to the downside did take off this previous level of um, support that we have here even though with a week okay but i liked it because again i was really anticipating the bs to come into these markets okay so once that happened guys i did identify this um origin okay this supply is on here this intraday supply um and that was when um when price retraced into those particular supply zone just before getting into that supply zone that was where i clicked on my sell button uh, right around here and uh, my anticipation is that this area is going to hold for further continuations to the downside okay for a possible retest of this previous swing low all right that we have here okay this swing low area okay so um well as you can see here the bs did come into these markets um from here uh the market has stated a little bit and then from here boom we we'll continue pushing to the downside okay as soon as price took off this level of um structure obviously supply zones continue to form on the charts we can map this out all right this is another supply zone okay but um well as this markets continued pushing down in this area here guys i think around uh 1.2577 area all right i book partial profits in this particular trade okay i mean it was really nice guys because if i didn't do that this market would have just gone all the way back okay 
so uh, I book partial profits in this case and I think I just moved my stop loss a little tighter and um, from here you notice that and uh, well the markets just continued ranging we got another push to the upside okay just enough to tap let me zoom in so you can see what I'm saying so you can see that we got another retracement to the upside to tap in literally the base of this particular um, supply zone that we have here and the market just tapped in and um, we got another tap in again today and um, being that today is Friday guys I, I was not really I didn't want to keep this trade open over the weekend okay so I just closed this trade just when the market retested 1.2600 institutional price level okay somewhere around here that was where I got out of this position somewhere around here just around let's say 12602 all right so i got off around 126.02 on the remaining portion of the trade and uh, well as you can see the market found support off of that institutional price level and uh, from here you can see the markets have now turned back again and uh, well um that is friday trading for you guys and that's the reason why i actually booked that profit because usually i would just let this thing um play out if this was let's say um, let's say Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I would not touch this trade. I would just let it either get to the stop loss on the remaining portion or for this markets to run all the way to um, profit targets. Okay, but in this particular case, being that today is Friday and I know how erratic um you know markets can be on Friday, that is the reason why I got out of this position and then uh, well scored a nice profit on the first half and well uh, some profit on the second part as well. So well that was a nice trade. Okay, all right. So that's it for the British pounds and US dollar trade. Now for the British pounds Canadian dollar trade that i took earlier in the week uh, i'm going to show you guys exactly the thought process again as you can see here if you um trade price patterns we can we almost have like an inverted head and shoulder formation here all right with this pretty much being the neckline of that head and shoulder okay and uh, well i don't trade patterns but again let's look at this from a demand and supply perspective which is pretty much how i trade right um the market's bottom down right around here uh you notice how we got into some intraday range um just to kind of read price action completely all right so obviously this is a supply zone right here okay this supply zone right here that led to the break of this level of um, structure that we have here to the downside so this became a supply zone and that's the reason why you see the market gives us a nice push to the upside but we continue to find resistance off of that supply zone area and then finally what happens we get a nice push to the upside okay that took off that supply zone okay and that creates a demand zone in the process okay so this is the demand zone that that move right there created okay that was the move that took off this what this supply zone right here so from here guys i expected the bulls to come into this market all right remember i'm also seeing this inverted head and shoulder okay so i'm expecting that this is going to be the um the the second neck all right the shoulder that will now continue to the upside right and um from there this demand zone continues to hold and finally what happens you get a nice push to the upside that pretty much takes out that neckline okay this is the resistance area that we have okay this is pretty much the neckline of that head and shoulder remember um one second remember all of this have not happened at that point okay i'm not seeing this price action i am just seeing up to this point so this was really looking like a very nice head and shoulder that could continue very well to the upside okay but um well again i'm not trading the head and shoulder i'm just trading demand and supply so well this is the demand zone that led to the break of that neckline of that head and shoulder right so i mapped out that demand zone here and um, my again my, my plan is very simple guys wait for price to push into that particular demand zone and then zoom into the smaller time frame to see if you get a trading opportunity uh, as you can see here guys um, again I'm shooting for just a couple of pips before hitting the previous um, swing high area and uh, if we zoom into the smaller time frame in this case I think minute one time frame um, let me see where can I find that price action one second okay it's right here okay all right so this is what happened in this pair guys um, let me zoom out so that we can see it okay so again remember this is minute one time frame things are happening very fast okay so the market dipped into that particular uh demand zone right around here all right pay attention i'm also keeping an eye at this uh, 1.700 institutional price level okay i'm expecting the markets to bounce off of this 1.700 area which is inside this particular demand zone as well okay just an additional confluence but if you pay attention here um again I, I didn't see this at that point but i can show you right now remember hindsight is 2020 but this is the first supply zone that we have in here you notice how the boost coming to this market take off the supply zone the markets pushed back into that particular demand zone that led to the um supply zone you know to that that, that led to this push to the upside we dip in and from here um i could have easily gone long here to be honest with you but again this is not what i did okay 
I'm not going to come here and try to act like I got the last beep. No. All right. So from here, what do I see? I'm now keeping an eye on this area. We have this little hesitation here before the bears came into this market. The market stopped into that area, gave us a hesitation again. So I'm keeping an eye in this area. And uh, well, as you can see here, this move right here took off this high in this area. So well, at that point, I identified this internal demand zone that took off this particular area here. Okay. With a little one, two, three formation as well. Okay. So at that point, I'm just keeping an eye in this particular area waiting for the markets to give me a deep back into this particular demand zone area i'm also keeping an eye at 1.700 all right and um, as soon as price gave us that retracement right around here i think 1.701 just a peep above that area i clicked on my buy button and uh, my anticipation is that well this area is going to hold price uh, well as you can see here this markets ran i can remember just one peep to my targets and from here turn back again guys um this one i really didn't want to take partial profits i was really confident that this market again remember i am seeing um the head and shoulder in the um, minute i think minute 30 time frame the inverted head and shoulder in the minute 30 time frame so i was very confident that um this market is going to continue shooting to the upside uh well uh, that did not happen but however price was able to just literally tap my profits um targets if i zoom in maybe like a minute five uh, price just literally um, came back again into that area, tapped that origin, and guess what? Uh, upon this second attack to the upside, guys, um, price was able to um, grab my profit target, and from there, you can see the BS came into this market. But well, uh, whatever it is that was happening after my profit target was hit is none of my business or none of my worries, okay? Uh, what, has, what matters the most is that I was able to read price action, and uh, well, um, the market was able to get my profit target, and I'm good to go, okay? all right so um uh, well that's pretty much it uh, i don't want this video to be too long guys um so that's how this um two trades um panned out um obviously i took other trades but again because of um time i'm not going to um walk through all the setups that i took all right but um hopefully you guys are getting an idea of how um, i make my trading decisions okay all right guys that's pretty much it guys um see you next week in the next update cheers and have a nice weekend bye bye